Hey guys, um, it's Shannon Clark here. I wanted to take a minute and give you some thoughts um, that I've been having um, since Wednesday night, Thursday morning, um, when or Thursday morning, when we heard about the loss of Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. Um, I haven't posted because I was on call and I didn't get home until late yesterday and I was, frankly, I was tired so I didn't say much about it. And I didn't want to make a post. I didn't want to share a photo. I, I wanted to actually talk to you guys. And here we go. And bear with me because I might, I have a lot of thoughts and I, they may not be necessarily in order. So here we go. When I um, started going through infertility and treatments in January of 2014, or a little bit after, I chose to be pretty transparent about it. I um, didn't document everything, but I wrote about it. I did my best to educate about it. Uh, I shared some on social media. I started the website, Babies After 35. I did all of that during the two years that it took, plus two plus years for us to conceive. Um, that was my choice because I, honestly what I felt was that as a woman and as an OBGYN who should have known about all the potential complications of delaying childbearing, I was still shocked about it. Like, I did not think it was going to happen to me. So I was like, you know what? If I'm shocked that I'm at over 40 and I can't get pregnant on my own, what do the rest of the women in this world think? So I kind of wanted to educate about that as much as possible. And so that's how Babies After 35 was born. It got to the point where we, we were using egg donor. Um, I shared that. Um, I didn't necessarily share every step of the way. I shared maybe after the fact, but that's just how I chose to do it. But I did share. And I was probably one of the first people, and this was, gosh, uh, five plus years ago, that I decided to share this, about, especially about the donor egg. It wasn't easy to share because I knew there was going to be criticism and question. I will say that overall the support was overwhelming, but there were those times where it wasn't. And it was downright mean and awful. And for lack of a better word, a phrase or whatever, the trolls came out after me. And that was probably my first real experience of being uh, kind of visible on social media and what the potential downfall could be when you're being transparent about sharing your journey. Um, but I took it and I just pushed those comments out of the way and at first I tried to respond to those comments, but eventually I was like, you know, it's not worth it. I'm not going to entertain them or even give them my time. I'm going to focus my time on the ones who are supporting me. And that's what I did. And that's what I still do. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a few times where I'm like, okay, I got to say something. And I do. But if you see me on social media not responding a lot to negativity, it's because it's not worth it. They don't deserve the extra attention that, that I give them or you guys give them. It's just not worth it. Okay. So that puts me into when I went on bed rest. I went on bed rest, I think it was around 21 weeks and six days with the twins because I had no cervix left. We had went on a little short vacation with friends to California for a week prior to that and we were in a car accident. I didn't think anything really happened from it, but looking back, um, I think for that most of that week I was contracting and didn't really realize it. I was a first time mom and I didn't know, even though I'm an OBGYN, I didn't know what contractions felt like. I had never experienced them. So the day before I went back to work for vacation, I was sitting in a restaurant with my husband and I felt Sydney, who was twin A, I felt her kicking in my vagina. And I was like, I don't think that's what it's supposed to feel like. So on that Monday when I back, went back to work, I was like, you know what? I want to take a look. So I went to my ultrasound unit and I asked them to scan me and sure enough, I had no cervix left and maybe about one centimeter. So some cervix left, but not a lot. And that's when um, I went on hospital bed rest. The reason why I went on hospital bed rest is because um, the chairman of my department, who was my mentor and also taking care of me, he's like, that's the only way you're going to get a shot because you're an active physician. And I want to kind, he was kind of keeping me in a little cocoon. Okay, so some women go home for bed rest, some women stay in the hospital. Just want to say it's up to the physician and the, the patient to decide which is best. But because he knew I was always doing something, he was like, the only way I know you're going to follow my rules is if I'm watching you every day. And that's what he did. But I have to admit, I didn't share much. I actually went back to look at how many pictures I took, how many posts I made, and I really didn't share much. Why? 
because I was afraid I was going to lose them. I was afraid that I was not going to home, come home with babies. So I really didn't share. And that was tough. Sorry. Okay. That was tough. There were many days where I thought that they would not be home with me. So, I kind of went into another place where I try not to think about it. Because the thought of not having them was too painful. So as a result, I didn't share. So I understand how women can feel that way. Where I'm going with this is that I got on the other side. I was able to take babies home. And I'm thankful for that every day. But one thing I did realize is that every person goes through this in a different way. And there are many women who don't go home with their babies. And I see that a lot. I think partially, part of the reason why I kind of disconnected myself during that time is because I had been with many women who did not go home with their babies, who had miscarriages, who had per pregnancy loss, who had babies died, die in infancy, who had stillbirths, the whole gamut, I've been through it. And they all grieve in their own way. So it's really not up to anybody to judge or decide if how they're grieving is appropriate. It's not a, sorry. It's not anyone else's business to decide if they put it public. So for anybody that was criticizing that couple for sharing what they were doing publicly, I wanna say this, what they did as people who are very high profile was not for attention. They get plenty of attention. She's got gazillions of followers. He's a musician. They got it, they get attention. What I think they did do was make other women who have gone through it and will go through it know that it happens, that it sucks, that it's painful, that it's okay to grieve and that we do need to grieve. So for that, I applaud them because I've seen some of the negative comments they've gotten and I don't think it's deserved. They did what they felt was right for them. And so I do think what they've done is helped to drop the stigma a little bit because I know many women can't experience it or experience the grief because they don't feel they should. Either they're being told that way, they're being told, oh, you could just have another one. They're being told, well, you were only four weeks or five weeks. It wasn't even a baby yet. Or it was just a chemical pregnancy. You really never saw anything on ultrasound. Just, that's not really a loss. Could you imagine being told that? And if you have been told that, I'm sorry. Because a loss is a loss no matter when it happens. So what I think we need to do is support each other a lot more and stop criticizing and stop judging. I hope that this couple and every other couple or individual or mom or dad or parent that goes, has gone through this and will go through this knows that it's okay to grieve. A loss is a loss no matter when it happens. That how you grieve is up to you and what's ever is best for you. And as a physician, I feel like uh, before I went through this and the potential of loss with them, with the bed rest, going through the failed embryo transfers, going through a miscarriage myself, I feel like before that, I was a pretty, I tried to be very understanding of my patients, but after going through it myself, 
I have a whole new appreciation for it. And I really try to put myself in their shoes and I really try to make them understand. There's really not any magic words I give to take the pain away. That's not my job to take the pain away. I can't take the pain away. But what I can do is be empathetic. And what I can do is listen. And what I can do is use my medical expertise and my personal experiences to try to help them understand what happened and why. Even though most of the times there's not a good explanation. The very first patient I delivered coming back from maternity leave after, after having been on two months of bed rest, six weeks in the NICU with the twins, and then I actually got six weeks at home before I came back to work. The very first patient I delivered was a stillbirth. I will never forget that because I knew that could have been me. So yes, this is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. I think we're all aware that it happens, especially those who have been through it. What we can't, what we can do with this month is if you want to share your story, share it. If you want to just get on and listen to other stories, do that. If you haven't grieved yet and you feel like it's time, do that. We have to take care of ourselves and we have to support each other. Social media is a beautiful thing. I mean, it's opened so many doors and it's, uh, allow the spread of education, but it can also, there's a downside and there's a very dark side to social media. I know this, and I know you do too. So choose to be supported instead. Don't engage any negative comments. Don't engage any of that. Just block it, which is what I do. Trust me, I've blocked a lot of followers in these past few months because, and non-followers, I don't know if they all follow me because I don't need that on my page for me or anybody else. So why did I come on here today? I want you guys to know that I understand. I know it's hard. I know it sucks. I support Chrissy Teigen and John Legend for doing what they did. It took a lot of courage. I know they helped a lot of women and a lot of couples and a lot of men by what they did. So I applaud them for that. It's not easy. So let's take this next month um, if you want to share, you could share here, share under this video, share your story. If you want to be anonymous and you want to share, just send it to me in my private messenger and I'll post it for you. And I, you don't have to, uh, give your name any way that we can might uh, here at Vase after 35 myself. If I can help you in any way, please let me know. I'm not going to respond to any comments here. There's a lot because, um, I'm probably not in the best mental capacity to do that, emotional sorry, capacity to do that. I just wanted to let you guys know how I'm feeling. Um, that night when Chrissy Teigen announced and John Legend announced what happened to them, I was going through something similar with my patient. I encourage every woman to take pictures, to smile on your pictures when you have a loss. To do whatever you need to do to document that because I have ne I will tell you this, I have never once had a patient tell me, I wish I hadn't taken pictures, but I've had many tell me that they wish they had. It's a hard decision to make in that moment because you're hurting so much. But one day you might look back on this and say, I wish I had some memories from that time. Okay. So there's many times where I will take pictures for, for them, even on their cell phone, just so they could have them and they could look at them when they're ready. So there you have it. That's my thought. Um, it's not easy being doing what I do, considering that I, as a maternal fetal medicine specialist, we uh, deal with a lot of loss with our patients. But my job is to be there as much as possible for my patients. So that is kind of the silver lining. Um, yesterday was a rough day for me in general, just because of what had happened on my shift at work, hearing uh, about their loss, thinking about my own losses and then what happened on bed rest. But I'm here today and I, uh, it's a new day for everybody, okay? So just love one another, support one another. That's all that I ask. And I wanna thank all of you guys also for supporting me and each other because I think it's a beautiful thing, especially going, given what's going on in this world today. Um, there can be some beauty in there somewhere. Have a great day. Thanks for listening. I hope I didn't look silly, <laughs> but you know what? Maybe I did and that's okay. Bye guys.